Hi everybody, today is um, Resurrection Sunday and I want to do a special <clears throat> video for about Jesus. Um, so today I'm actually going to be sharing, this video is going to be about the love of Jesus through his suffering. Um, so we're actually going to learn about the crucifixion and what he went through, which you can read about in the Gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, he talks about the crucifixion and what he went through to suffer for our sins. And through his crucifixion, he took on the world's sin. Um, so he took on all of our sin. Even as an innocent man, he took our sins. And he fulfilled the law and he conquered sin he defeated death so um and he defeated the evil one satan so um and then he is resurrected on the third day which is what resurrection sunday is about so resurrection sunday um is actually the third day and christ was risen again and in it, in the next video i'll actually be talking about his resurrection um but today we'll be discussing about his crucifixion. And actually, um, I actually did this in a very particular way. I decided to go ahead and do the crucifixion in a story manner. Um, so instead of just talking about the crucifixion, and instead of just explaining the things he went through, um, I actually went ahead and made a story, um, I'll put it in story terms, I guess you can say. So there are some things that I, um, that it, it's not as detailed as the Bible. Um, well, I mean, obviously there's going to be more in the Bible and it describes every little thing that happened uh, once Jesus was arrest arrested and then crucified. Um, but it goes over what he may have went through according to the Bible and according to what we know um, as when, when people are put under these traumatic uh, circumstances um, with their body um, being tortured as he was. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so again, I wrote this. And it's kind of just to give you an idea of um, what Christ went through in his suffering and the love that he still had and that he held even through his suffering that he still had for us, the mercy, the grace, and the love that he still held for us. All right. A heart strangled by anxiety, distress so heavy, knees buckle under a healthy, strong man, a man once standing strong, filled with wisdom, given from the divine and all-powerful God, now with his face toward the earth, horrified with a melted heart. The capillaries around his sweat glands break from anguish, and blood drips out in place of sweat. As the thoughts of his foreboding torture tremble through his mind, his body shakes, a reflection of the convulsions that would soon overtake his body. This man was Jesus Christ, a man in human flesh, but also God's incarnate Son, the Lord of all creation, the one in which all of us were created through, the Holy of Holies in the highest. His love for the Father surpasses all and the love of the Father conquers all. Even our very own well-deserved punishment, even while we are wretches, dirty, shameful, the Father stretched out his hands with compassion and longed for us. The Son had mercy. He understood the only way to rescue us from a fate of eternal disaster was through him. As a true king, would serve his people, so for his people to serve him, 
The Son chose to lay down His life for us so that we wouldn't have to perish. So from once sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven, in all its loveliness, its infinite light and splendor, Jesus came down into his own creation to walk among us, to reveal to us the way back to eternity, to reunite us with our beloved Father, and to gain victory over the evil that condemns us once and for all. The mighty Son of God cried. He cried out to the only one he knew could save him from such an unthinkable suffering. The only way for the price of freedom for us, his beloved sheep. For who could ever bear the entire world's sin? His loyalty to the Father, his compassion for us, transformed his kneeling in weakness into a kneel of obedience to the Father's will. The courage of a shepherd to protect his flock with his very life was the staff that brought him to his feet again. It's even more terrible facing a miserable fate, alone, all alone. An angel stood with him to comfort him, to remind him of the glory he would bring to the worthy father. And then he thought of those who had been with him all that time, his friends. He staggered back to the place he had left his disciples, only to find them deep in sleep. Prayer, that's all he asked, prayer for this for his time had come. They had fallen asleep a third time. Jesus was alone in his sorrow. They woke at once as the guards came to arrest Jesus in the night in unjust capture. They bound him up like an angry rebel when not once did he resist. The good shepherd betrayed with a kiss by his own disciple. And with that, his own disciples scattered, deserting him. Exhausted, the holy man was dragged into the court to be judged. The crowd raged for, his, for this innocent man to be sentenced to death. No one could bear witness against him because he had done no wrong. He had, spoke, he had not spoken deceit, yet without reason, Jesus was stricken, beaten, hit in the face spit on and laughed at, mocked, and doubted in. And Jesus did not build up hate in his heart, but tears of pity fell from his eyes. He had spoken truth to save them, and they threw it back in his face. Pilate and Herod could not find guilt in Jesus, so Pilate, hoping the Jews would be satisfied with Jesus being severely punished, sent Jesus to be scourged. One of the Roman soldiers took the deadly cat of nine tails, a whip that held lead balls, broken bone and glass, and he swung at the back of Jesus. Jesus' cries of pain mixed with the sound of the flesh ripping off his back. Strips of his skin and muscle hanging there, about to be whipped and pulled out again and again and again. When would it end? The torment. Jesus, bruised, shredded, and lashed once again and again and again. His bones exposed, his form so disfigured, no longer noticeable as the teacher they had just eaten with, but a lamb ripped in shreds from head to heel. Pilate stood in shock as he presented the bloody Savior to the Jews, and they still persisted, crucify him. Pilate asked the Jews to choose, to receive a man who was punished horribly as they desired, or to receive Barabbas, a guilty man. Jesus, the one who healed many, who gave sight, who blessed and fed many, rejected for a murderer. A crown of thorns was beaten and deeply pierced into Jesus' throbbing head, a purple robe wrapped around Jesus. Attire for the king of the Jews, the Roman soldiers mocked, 
they continued to beat him in the face and pretended to worship him as a joke. Crucifixion was not intended to just put a man out of his misery, but to increase it, to humiliate him, to inflict torture upon him. It was considered the greatest punishment in Rome. Jesus was forced to carry the about 80 pound crossbar he was to be hung upon on his aching, battered shoulders and back. The trauma and fatal condition of his body caused him to need another to help him carry it. The man was named Simon. They carried the cross about 650 yards distant to Golgotha. All the people watched, some taking advantage of Jesus' dire condition to curse at him, some being overcome in lamentation, weeping for his dreadful suffering. In all this, Jesus, beaten almost to death, looked upon them with kindness. More not for me, he told them, but for yourselves, for your children. He continued on, speaking of the woe to befall humankind in the near future. His selfless love as he disregarded his own suffering, but continued to look after his people. Jesus was thrown down brutally to be nailed to the cross. The soldiers knew how to cause a person the most pain placing the nail right through the median nerve with the wrists and the feet so that the victim would have to hang by the excruciating pain being shot through the arms and legs and even pulling against that pain to breathe. Splinters and rough wood dug into Jesus's torn back and arms. Every breath was a fight. He used some of his last words for our sake. While he hung in agonizing, forgiveness flowed from his lips. While he shouted, while we shouted insults abusively through our grave hatred, rejecting his gift, wrapped in crimson graciousness, his very blood spilt on our behalf. He held not our cruelty over our heads, but washed away those depths and placed our guilt upon his own head. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He continues to be ridiculed as those watching shake their heads at him and scourge his heart. The robber crucified on one side of Jesus cursed at him. The robber on the other side recognized him and believed in him. I thirst, Jesus said, and they gave him sour wine to drink from which would have stung his wounded lips and dried his swollen tongue. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out. A death that should have come a long time ago. A death that could have come a little while longer, but no man can take away Jesus' life. He laid it down himself in the right time. It is finished, Jesus spoke. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A great darkness overcame the land. The earth quaked, and the, veil of, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. As they looked upon the one they pierced, they realized it then, a little too late, that this man was the Son of God. This is the Messiah. Thank you for listening to um, what I wrote um, about Jesus' crucifixion. As you can see in that, um, Jesus was beyond tortured, didn't deserve it at all. <sighs> tortured in more than just a physical way, but abusively mocked at and rejected betrayed just even as he was tortured and crucified they still were not satisfied I mean nobody should ever have to go through any torment it's just it's completely hard to even fathom how <laughs> How Jesus even, and 
he did it all for us and he did it all the whole time with love thinking about us forgiving even those who were mocking him so <clears throat> I will go ahead and read um, I'll go ahead and read Psalm 22 um, we're going to read verse 1 my God my God why have you forsaken me why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? This is actually um, written by David, but it's portraying Jesus' words. It's foretelling Jesus' um, words as he was on the cross, as we you know, can read in, in the Gospels. Uh, let's go ahead and read 7 through 8. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let, let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. It just talks about how they were just <laughs> mocking and shaming him. Doubting in him. He couldn't come down from the cross because it would have ended what he was trying to accomplish, which was the will of the Father. So he had to listen to them mock him and doubt him, even hanging up there. And then let's go ahead and read uh, 14 through 18. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a postured, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing, they cast lots. Um, and then let's read Psalm 1610. For you will not leave my soul in shale nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So this is um, Jesus saying that God did not leave him to die though. So on the third day he was resurrected, resurrected into life. So, I mean, there was so much glory brought out of his suffering, that he, you know, was tortured and suffered and died for us, but was risen again um, by God's power on the third day. So Jesus is alive now, and it is accomplished, and we're forgiven of all our sins through the blood of Jesus. Um, also, just to, um, I just wanted to also mention you know, the story is not to compel you or, like, to, to make you feel bad for something you didn't, you know, ask. You know, none of us wanted Jesus to go through this. Us that, you know, love Jesus, we, we don't, none of us wanted him to do that. Um, I know when, when I started coming to know God, it was hard for me to, 
accept it, even though I didn't want to reject Jesus, but it's because I wanted to take punishment on myself. Um, I would never want anybody to take my place for what I had done wrong. So, um, but it's not to make you feel guilt or, or to believe, you know, into believing. Um, it's just to know that you, you can be saved if you really want to be. That Jesus already took your place in punishment and death. And if you truly want salvation, it can be yours through Jesus. He loves you, and he loves us. So, in John 15, 13, there's no greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus did. So you don't have to feel the need to suffer for your wrongs and failures or sins. And you don't have to feel like you need to be perfect to be accepted either. Because Jesus has gone through it all for you already. Just accept his sacrifice and do what you can to live free of sin. Thank you for joining me today. Please share and have a wonderful day.